Well, in the book of John, chapter number 15, I like this chapter. I've been noticing that this is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. In John 15, verse 12, uh, Jesus is speaking. You can see it in red. And for those of you who are visiting, you have a worksheet in your bulletin. So follow me with the worksheet. We like the worksheets because we can do what? Go to work. All right. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And then here's the operative verse. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Church, I'm teaching from the life-changing, life-building, and life-blessing message today. And it is entitled, The Greatest Love. Say that with me. The Greatest Love. I guess you could say no greater love, too, but I entitled it, The Greatest Love. I'm telling you, how many of you all have heard that verse before? Greater love has no man in this, that he laid down his life is for Have you heard that verse before? Yes. Okay. I've heard that verse many, many times. But Friday night, something happened. And the Holy Ghost brought that verse to my mind. And it was an illumination of what he told me. That's what I want to share with you today. No greater love has any man that he laid down his life for his friend. Translation, if you really love, you're going to lay down your life for your friends. Somebody say, amen. 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 Alright, now watch this. The key statement is, as Jesus laid down his life for us, in other words, there's some proof to talk about you love. But you know how people keep walking around talking about, man, oh, that's the easiest thing people say, man, I love you, man. I love you, sister. I love you, love you. Somebody say, lay down your life for me. Oh, we already in the deep water, huh? You really love your friends? Lay down your life for them. Because that's the greatest love. Jesus, as Jesus laid down his life for us, key statement, we must lay down our lives for others. As he laid down his life for us and called us friends, we must lay down our life for others if they really are our what? Friends. Friends is such a such a uh, misused word. Oh, you know what? That's my friend. They don't know me from a can of paint. They sure ain't laying down their life for me. See, friend is somebody that lays down their life for you. Now watch this. You say, Pastor, where did you get this from? Well, 1 John 3.16. Well, we can remember that, can't we? John 3.16, just put a first in front of it, huh? 1 John 3.16, look what it says. It says, hereby perceive we the love of God. Somebody say, this is the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You all see this? This is really interesting. <laughs> During this week, spend some time with John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. See how they coalesce. See how they connect. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world, meaning the Father, that he gave his only begotten Son, right? But 1 John 3.16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Well, who laid down his life for us? Jesus. So it wasn't just the Father that so loved the world. Who else loved the world? Jesus, the Son of God. Not just Father God, but the Son of God. He laid down his life for us to prove his love for us. Somebody say, prove your love. The greatest love is our love relationship with the Father through the Son and by the Holy Spirit. But it is precisely that love that causes us and should cause us to love others. In other words, if you really love God, then you should love people. Come on, can, can, come on somebody. Am I right about that? If you, if you say you really love God, you really should love people. Uh, love, let me give you a good definition of love. Love is a willful desire to please the Father by giving ourselves to the benefit of another. I'm going to say that again. Love is a willful desire to please the Father by giving ourselves to the benefit of another. 
you know what I'm really trying to help us to see in that definition? I'm trying to help us to see that love is not just a feeling. You know, we, we reduce love down. I mean, that's just so tragic. We just reduce love down to goosebumps. Ooh, I just, oh, I love, I love it in him. How oh, I love her. I mean, love is not just a feeling. Love is an action. Amen? Look, listen, and feelings follow faith. Faith does not follow feelings. You don't, listen, you don't even feel like going to work every day, but you do. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, I, I don't even want to talk about whether you feel like I'm to church every week. Or week. But when you get here, you start feeling good, don't you? Amen. See, feelings follow faith. Don't ever let faith, don't ever let feelings try to lead faith. Because there's nothing in the Bible that says the just shall live by feelings. It says the just shall live by faith. faith. Amen. Bring it down just a little bit, brother. A little boom, I, I'm hearing. All right, now watch this. Uh, love is a willful desire. Somebody say willful. willful. In other words, it's an act of your will. You have to make up your mind to love somebody. You, amen. That's what's wrong with that's what's wrong with the black race right now. Too many black men have not made up their mind to love that child that they sold into the earth. Oh, I wish I had an amen right there. Well, I, you know, I did the act and everything. I love my children. You love your children, well then why don't you take care of them? You know what? Well, see, I don't love her. I, I you know, I would. You just, hey, if you didn't love her, you should have been messing around with her. Amen. First of all, that's first of all. But second of all, okay, let's assume all that's water under the bridge. But those are your children. You need to take care of your children. You need to put up the money for your children. You need to spend some time with your children because anything else is not love. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Love is not just a feeling; it's an action. Our first motivation for that action is our love for God. And then the second motivation for that action is our love for others. Amen? Let, let me tell you something. When I was a little boy, my father, uh, he used to tell me things, but he, at the time, at that time in his life, he wasn't really in the church. But later he became an ordained minister. But at that time, he wasn't really in the church. But he used to tell me things that I have come to find out that were biblically based all the time. He used to say, how can you say you love God that you can't see, you know, when you don't love your brother that you see every day? Amen? Well, guess what? That was biblically based. 1 John 4.20. If a man says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. If a man, listen to this. If a man said, I love God, but you hate your brother... It says he's a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Somebody say amen. amen. See, so you can't walk around talking about I love God and you hating everybody. If you love God, you're going to listen. Watch this. Do you know that God loves everybody? Yes. Yes. That was just about 10 of us. Yes. I said, do you know God loves everybody? Yes. You know why God loves everybody? Because he made everybody in his image in his life. Somebody say, that means you. That means you. I mean, everybody. So what gives us the right to not love somebody when God loves everybody? I didn't say that you have to be their besties, especially if they're acting bad. You can stay with them, but you can still, you can still pray for them. Because love is an action, right? Somebody say, pray for them. Pray for them. All right, here we go. I got three main points, and then I'm out of here. Here we go. In order to love God and your brother, you must become three things. In order to love God and your brother, there's three major things that we're going to have to learn to do, church. In order to love God and your brother, point number one is I must become, you must become, we must become a living sacrifice. There it is. It, listen, we're talking about love. We're talking about the greatest love. If I, you don't, don't, don't even use that word anymore if you're not going to be willing to do this. I love you. You know, the Greeks had it right. They had to have different words for love. They don't use the same word to mean love in, in, in every way because we use that one word love for everything. You know, I love you. I love pizza too. You know, I mean, wait a minute. I ain't better than pizza. You know what I mean? No, I, am I not living and moving and have my being? I mean, pizza's gone and eating today and gone tomorrow. What I'm saying is we got to really begin to understand love. So in order to become 
love and love our God and love our brother, we must become a what? A living what? Romans 12, 1, very familiar verse of scripture, it says, I beseech you therefore, this is Paul talking, one of the most important verses in the whole Bible, because it's, it's telling us, we, we just talked about this in ministerial training this morning, uh, ministers. We said, listen, everybody, listen, boy, I'm glad the ministerial training is flowing over, so because there's more ministers than are in ministerial training. All y'all are ministers of reconciliation, so you get some training this morning. Somebody say, I'm in training class. I'm in training class. Now, here's the point. Everybody in here has a different personality, but everybody in here has the same destiny. Amen. You have a different personality, but as born-again believers in the body of Christ, we have the same destiny. And you know what that destiny is? To conform to the image of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. That's right. That's what we have in common. We're all supposed to. Well, well, that's the whole point of the name. Christian, Christ-like. We're supposed to, we, I don't care if you're an introvert, an extrovert, or, or whatever. The point is, you are supposed to conform to the image of Christ. Somebody say, I'm supposed to do it. I'm supposed to do it. Now watch this. He says, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. See, you have to be a living sacrifice in order to, to fulfill your destiny. You have to be a living sacrifice in order to conform to the image of Christ. It says, holy, pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. He's saying, and then the, in the next verse, in verse 2, it bears it out. It says, don't be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then he says that you may prove. See, if you really get conformed to the image of Christ, there will be some proof. Amen. 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 See, love has proof. Well I, well, I, you know what? I love my family. I just don't never uh, clean up, help clean up the house. I never do nothing, but I love them. I love my wife. Don't ever take her out. Don't want to do nothing nice for her, but I love them. I love my pastor. I don't know. I don't know. Man down here cleaning the toilets by himself. I don't know. You know what's, what's up with that? See what I'm saying? It, love is an action. I love my members. Suppose you laid up in the hospital. You say, I've been past the love me. I've been in here too much. ain't going to see you, though. Brother Jerry, you were in the hospital, weren't you, before? Did I come see you? Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Most of everybody in here, I know, been down or whatever. Guess what? I came to see you. I called you. I, I was there for you. Why? You know why? Because I love you. Amen. And love is an action. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. All right, now watch this. Watch this. The, the, the scripture says that we must become, point number one, we must become a what kind of sacrifice? A living sacrifice. Sacrifice. We have to, we have to sacrifice means to put to death, and it means to give up something of value. We have to be a living sacrifice. Here's the problem with that. The problem with becoming a living sacrifice, the problem is because we're living. That's the problem. We want to live. But watch this. The problem with being a living sacrifice is sacrifices have to die and we want to stay alive. I'm going to let y'all say it on that for a minute. Sacrifice means to kill. The kill thing. But a living sacrifice means I'm, I'm, I'm dying daily even though I'm living. What am I dying to? I'm dying to myself. So the problem is, to, in order to be a living sacrifice, the problem is, unfortunately, humans are naturally selfish because we were born in sin. Yeah. See, we don't want to be a living sacrifice because we were born in sin, and sin causes us to be selfish. In other words, it's all about me. Mm -hmm. All about me. We learned it from a little baby. I cry, they start running. I, you know, I, did, I mean, even from a little bit, I don't even know what I'm doing. But I, you start going, hey, I go, wait a minute. What do you want? What do you want? You say, oh, I'm running this. I'm running this house. I see how this goes. And, and then by the time they get two years old, then they're like, I want to go to McDonald's. I want to go to McDonald's. No, we're not going, I want to go to McDonald's. Okay, we're going to go to McDonald's. Okay, we're going to go to McDonald's. Okay, we're going to go to McDonald's. Okay, 
They want what they want. Then they get a little older. I want a bicycle. I said I want a bicycle. I said I want a bicycle. Don't worry about them cleaning up their room like what you asked them to do. They just trying to tell you what they want. Somebody say selfish. selfish. 